So this is the first problem that we're going to be working on. Um, so I'll read it out. So let's define a rotated array as a sorted array where the numbers have all been rotated to the right some number of places with numbers wrapping around when they reach the end. So for instance, if you've got the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you rotate that three times, you're going to get 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. So the problem here is given a rotated array, find the number of times it was rotated. All right. Well, hi, Tommy. How are you doing? I'm Connor. Good. Nice to meet you, Connor. How's your day going? It's going pretty well on yours. Awesome. Not too bad. You know, it's, it's pretty sunny out here in, in San Francisco, which uh, doesn't happen too often. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's pretty warm out here for October in Cambridge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, thanks for taking the time. Let's, let's jump right into the question. So uh, you've got the replet open. That's great. Notice that you've selected Python there. Is that the language that you want to use for this? Yes, it is. Perfect. That works for me. Um, so uh, here's the question that I'd like you to solve. So let's define a, a rotated array as a sorted array where the numbers have all been rotated to the right some number of places with numbers wrapping around when they reach the end. So for instance, if I give you the input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you should return back 3. Uh, since, or sorry, when I rotate that three times, you should return back um, 3. As basically as you've as you've written in the in the comment there, so that's the that's the question that I'd like you to solve. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, so I'll start out by asking some clarifying questions, if that sounds good to you. Yeah. Um, so just to make sure, it does say given a rotated array here. I just want to clarify that something like this right here would be our input. So I'm I'm I don't get this original array at all. I just get the rotated array as input. Yep, that's right. All right. Uh, and then my other clarifying question is, um, we in this one, all of these are consecutive integers. So one, two, three, four, five, all right next to each other. Can I assume that that will be the case? Or might be, there be a case like um, where my original array is like one, three, four, seven, ten? Yeah, so that, that could exist. So they're not necessarily consecutive, but they are sorted. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. All right. Um, in that case, let me um, just look at a couple of examples just so I can see if we can start to see a pattern here. Sure. Um, so we see when we get this first example, we want that to map to three um, because we're rotating that one three times. Um, let me see if I, if I were to rotate that one more time, then it would look like two, three, um, four, five, one. And so that would be as if I had rotated it four times. Um, and then I'll try some, some ones with different numbers. So if my original array has like some di different numbers in it, it might look like um, a rotated one might look like six, eight, 12, one, three. Um, and in this case, um, in this case, we would have rotated it. So one would have been the original one. Um, and so we've rotated it one, two, three times. So we would also want this one to return three. Mm -hmm. um, and then just one more uh, kind of like edge-ish case is um, if it's not sorted at all, I'm assuming that we would want to say that that was rotated zero times. Yes, that's right. All right. So just to check in, do all of those cases seem good to you? Yeah, um, nothing else you'll, you'll probably run into here. All right, great. Um, so in that case, let me go ahead and run through looking for patterns so I can see like just how I would figure this out if I was looking through this as a human is I would like go to the first one. And I guess the important thing I'm looking for is all of these numbers are increasing. And I want to look for like the first time that they decrease. So they start going down. So like in this case, I go like I go to zero. I go to one, it's increasing. I go to two, it's increasing. And then when I get to element three, it's decreasing, uh, which means it's rotated three times. Okay, so, so, and then just to verify that, I'll go through this one. So in this one, I start at element zero, then one, it's still increasing, two, still increasing, three, still increasing, but at four, it decreases again. So I think that is a pretty good pattern to use there is that when we get to an index, when it starts decreasing, that's the index that we want to return. 
Yeah, that looks um, that looks exactly right to me. That's uh, yeah, that point where it goes from increasing to decreasing is is the index that tells you the the number of times it's been rotated. All right, perfect. In that case, I think I'll go into writing some code if that sounds good to you. Yeah, let's see that. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and define a function here, and so like I guess I'll just say like get rotate number. Sure, sounds good. And it's going to take in this array. Uh, that looks like it might be reserved, so I'll take in a list, ls. Um, and now I want to go through all of the elements in ls. So, um, and the index is important here, so I guess I'll go ahead and say for i in range ls. And now what I want to do is for each i, like when I'm here, i is 2, I want to compare it to the one before that and see if it's less than that. So, so let me... Uh, I guess I would say something like if ls bracket i is less than ls bracket i minus one. So we're saying if my current element is less than the element before that, mm -hmm. then I would go ahead and I know that that's the place that I want to stop. So I can go ahead and say return i. Um, and now... Um, looking at this special case here where nothing happens, I guess I would go through this entire list and never get to that point. So I guess if I finish this whole thing, uh, so I don't find any point where an element is uh, less than its predecessor, I'm going to go ahead and return zero since I know that the list is not um, doing it, it is not rotated at all. Um, so now just as a sanity check, I'm going to go through this with um, this first example here. Um, so acting as the computer, I take in ls, which is this list I've highlighted, and then I go ahead and say for i in range ls, so that's going to start me off at 0, and I'm going to say if ls bracket 0, which is 3, is less than ls bracket, oh, ls bracket 0 minus 1 is going to be ls bracket negative 1, um, which is this 2 here, um, which I guess will not be a problem here um, because our if three the the only case when this first element is going to be less than the last element is when the array is not rotated at all so i would want to return zero in that case um, so that actually makes me think that i may not need this return zero at the end here um, just, just kind of a peculiarity of um, Python indexing, where if I say ls bracket negative one, um, it's going to be the last element of the list instead of giving me an error like it might in C or Java or some other programming language. Yeah, um, makes sense. I hadn't thought of that, but I think you're right. All right. So, um, and then finishing going through that example, um, for this one, it would start out at zero and see that um, it is, in fact, uh, three is in fact greater than two, so it'll continue. Um, it'll get to this one, it'll say that four is greater than three, so it'll continue. It'll get to five, say five is greater than four, so it'll continue. But then when i is three, we'll see that ls bracket i is, it is in fact less than ls bracket i minus one. So we'll go ahead and return i, which is three, which is as, as expected. So just running through it like as a human, uh, that seems to work. So now let's move on to writing some tests. Yeah. So I can go ahead and say, I'll just um, print one out first to verify. So I'll go ahead and say, print get rotate numbers of our first list here. And hopefully this will end up with three. So I can go ahead and run my code here. And we've got a problem here where I'm saying list object cannot be inter interpreted as an integer. Oh, okay, and I think what's going on here is I can't just say for i in range list because um, range has to take in an integer. So I actually have to look at the length of the list here. Yeah, that's right. Instead. So now uh, I'll go ahead and try that again. All right, nice. And so that's looking pretty good. So that's looking like it's printing three. And then I'll just go ahead and try with our other lists here. So. Um, hopefully this second one should translate to four. This third one should translate to three. And this last one 
should translate to zero. And we'll go ahead and run that. And it looks like I added, oh, I forgot a yep, yeah, just bracket, bracket here. There. I'll run that. And it three, looks three, like that looks right. is giving us the result we want. Um, so that's looking pretty good to me. So I guess I'll, I'll check in at this point and see if there's anything that you notice about this or any other corner cases you think I should try out. Yeah, this, this looks right to me. Um, what is the runtime of this? Yeah, of course. So going through the runtime, um, since I'm going through I in range length of LS, um, I'm going to go through this loop a maximum of N times if there's N elements in LS. And then just accessing elements of a list in Python is O of 1 and comparing to integers in Python is going to be O of 1 um, in, in terms of the size of the list. Um, and so this whole operation inside the for loop is going to be constant time. So I'm going to say that the entire runtime is going to be O of N. So if there are N elements in the list, it'll take a maximum of N times. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, can you think of any ways to make it faster? Yeah, let's see. So if I'm working on making it faster, I wonder, hmm. So I, I guess the way that any way that we could make it faster would be to, hmm, I'm actually a little bit unsure because I, I, like going through it uh, as a human, I can't think of anything else I would do than go through each element. Um, so I'd, I'd love to know if, if you have any hints, if you could nudge me in the right direction a little bit. Yeah. So keep in mind that the list is sorted even though it's rotated we have this property that it's sorted um, so is there any any search we could use that leverages the fact that it's sorted hmm we could use so so generally with a sorted list we could use a uh, just a binary search um, so if we uh, if we're going through and doing that, then how would I apply a binary search to this problem? So I guess I could, um, let, let's see. So, so if I go through kind of the, the, the motions of doing a binary search with a problem like this, mm -hmm. um, I would start in the middle um, and see that I, I've got a, of size five here. Um, uh, okay, so I guess I would have to look at the first element first, see that my first element is a three. And then when I head to the middle, I see that I'm at size five, which means that whenever that, that it's been in, increasing since then, which means I guess I can at that point, I can go ahead and narrow my search down to the latter half of the list after I've checked that one. Um, and vice versa, if I... Uh, Let's say for what's a good example for this one, um, if I start at or, or I, I guess a better, I guess I don't have a great example for that one. But it, but if I if I were to get to a point where I was like checking this three here, then I would know like if I'm checking at this three, I know I can just look at everything before the three. Um, so yeah, I think a binary search would uh, be able to help us out there. Um, ju just want to check in time-wise. Um, is it all right if I go ahead and try and implement that, or um, do you think we should move on? Yeah, let, let's try to implement it, it quickly, and then if we're not at time, that's that's totally fine. Yeah, sure. So let me uh, leave this other one here just to uh, um, just to have some something to reference. Um, and now this newer version here, um, I don't necessarily want to go through um, each eye in this range. Um, I want to go ahead and say my, like, um, let's see, my, I only care about when I'm going from a high number to a lower number. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and say that my highest number that I've seen so far is going to be um, the first element in the list is LS bracket zero. And then uh, and then I can go ahead and say that my lowest element that I've seen so far is, um, 
we can go ahead and look at the last element of the list because I know it's going to be um, somewhere in between, or, or I guess we don't necessarily know that's the lowest. Let me uh, think about how we'd, we would want to initialize those. Uh, so five, if, if that is the lowest, then yeah, I guess we'll, I'll just start out with zero and go through kind of the logic of this. Um, and then, uh, oh, although I think I'm going to actually want, um, so if I'm looking for a, an item that is lower here, I'm also going to want to keep track of the indices that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Um, does that seem like it's going to be on the right track? Yeah, I think in general you'll probably want to look at sort of the, the left, keep track of the sort of left and right endpoints of the search, and then you can compare wherever you land on in the middle to those left and right endpoints. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. So um, let me go ahead and say that like left for now is going to be zero, the like first index, and then since we're starting our search with the whole list, our right is going to be um, the length of the list minus one. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I can go ahead and say, like, uh, I can go ahead and instead of having this whole for loop here, I can say um, while right is greater than left, so like while we're still working on converging in, then I'll go ahead and say that my uh, current index is going to be equal to uh, right plus left divided by two. Let me get some parentheses in there. Um, and so that will take the middle element. And then since we're working in Python, I realize I should probably do some integer division here. Yep. Um, so that'll get us our current index that we're working with. Um, and then I can go ahead and say, so in, and then let, let me look at this example to see what we should do. So in this example, our, if our current index is greater than the index on the left, then I know I can narrow my search to the right half. So if ls bracket current, so if that current number is greater than ls bracket left, it's greater than the left number, then I can go ahead and I can narrow down the search to this right half of the list. So I can go ahead and say that left equals current. Um, and then I can go ahead and say, otherwise, if ls bracket current is less than ls bracket left, then I can go ahead and say right equals current. So I know that we are going ahead and changing our rightmost there. Um, and let me, and so now we just kind of have to work on what happens after we do narrow in on that case. Um, so let's go through the example with this top one again. So um, we get to this point with this five here. Um, and so now we know that our difference is going to be between five and two. And actually, now that I'm thinking of, uh, yes, yes, we're, we're looking between five and two here. Um, so five, our left is at this point is going to be two and our right is going to be four. And so now our central one is going to be one here. And so now, um, since one is uh, less than five, we would hit this case. And so we would say right equals current. So now our left is going to be five and our right is going to be one. So we know that we're ending here when our right one is just one more than our left one. Um, and so let, let me go through what the example would do in this if, if left is two as we have here and right is three. Um, so when, when left is two and right is three, our current is going to be three. Um, and so this is going to say, if current is greater than the left one, which isn't true because uh, they're the same thing. And then we'll say if current is less than the um, is less than the left one, which isn't going to be true uh, because they're the same, then we can have an else statement here. And if it's an else, 
then we know that this current one is kind of one below where we want to do. So we can try and return um, our right here. Um, so now just running through with an, another example is kind of a sanity check. So if we're, we'll take this one here. Um, let's, uh, let's say our, so our left is zero to start, right is four. We can find the one in the middle, which is going to be element two. And then we're going to see that two is greater than our left. So that means that we're going to narrow our search down to these last three elements here. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and say that, um, yeah, so, so now we're going to go ahead and find the middle element here, which is one. And we'll say that like, uh, we'll say that left, uh, it, yeah, so this is our current. And then we're checking, is current greater than left? Uh, no, that's not true. Is current less than left? Yes, that is true. So we're changing our current to this, um, or, or we're changing our right to this. And so now we're just looking at this section here. These are our left and right. And when we compare uh, left to current and right to current, they're both going to be the same thing. So we get this else here, and we return what's on the right, which is one, um, which should be correct. So um, just basic conceptually wise, um, it looks like um, things are working out here. Um, so let me, oh, let me run through it real quick with the uh, unrotated array to see how things are going there. Mm -hmm. So in, in this case, we're going to get to this middle one. We're going to see that uh, right is greater than, or yeah, the current is greater than left. So we'll get to this one here now, and we'll see that the right is uh, still greater than the left. Um, so now our, uh, yeah, yeah. So our, our current is still greater than the left. So our left is becoming this one. And now we're going to go ahead and say it, the left is still going to be this one. Um, hmm. So that's not going to give us the right answer here. It looks like. Yeah. I think the, the stop condition you're looking for is, is sort of in that first example, you can see with the one, the number to the left is bigger and the number to the right is bigger. So that's kind of the, the stop condition for your search. Otherwise though, the, the, I think the binary search is right. Okay. Yeah. So that, that makes sense. So, so maybe I can go ahead and, and check that, uh, check that condition. So like if we're looking at our current one, we would, uh, yeah, if, would we, do you think for each time we would look at our current and check if it's uh, smaller than the left one and great, but smaller than the left one and smaller than the right one? Uh, yeah, that and seems then right. If, okay, sure. Um, so if our, we're already checking if our current is smaller than the left one here. Um, and so I can go ahead and nest a little bit of ifs here and say like if our current um, is also smaller than the one oh okay oh sorry sorry but we're not looking at direct neighbors there so let's look at direct neighbors up here so that would look like if ls bracket current minus one is less than ls bracket current, which is less than ls bracket current plus one, which is a nice thing we can do in Python is just combine these different uh, inequalities. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll take away those parentheses for now. And so in this case, we know that current is the one that we want to return. So we can go ahead and return current here. Um, and then let me just uh, do another sanity check um, with these. Yeah, I think this this looks this looks basically right. Just for just for time, we're basically at time. But yeah, overall, this uh, this search looks pretty good. All right. Awesome. Well, well Thank thanks you. for taking the time for chatting with me today, and have a have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks. It was great to meet you. Awesome. See you later.